Wow, this is a momentous. Hi, it's Debbie Dashinger. This is Dare to Dream. No, it's seriously momentous. Welcome to the show. Um, these cards may play a part in today's live show. And this is amazing because I'm being pushed to do something that I have been resisting. And you know what happens when you resist, right? In your face. It does not go away, um, no different than anybody else. And so I'm laughing at the irony of where I am right now. This is the second week in a row. Last week, I was supposed to have a guest on the show and she had the most unbelievable, technical, bizarre issues, right? And we worked together. It was, our show was an hour late. And I remember what was happening. I was thinking, this is so strange. Uh, what am I gonna do? I don't have a guest. And then of course the thought came up, you know, girlfriend, it's your show. This is your sh platform for 16 years. You could do your own show. And then it's like, nah, I don't think so. Um, not comfortable. And, but the universe is telling me and showing me exactly where I need to be headed. Uh, which means uh, that was a yes, do your own show. And so this week I'm supposed to have this huge name and uh, she just didn't show, literally didn't show, which is never happens. And I WhatsApped her uh, and she wrote back something, you know, definitely devastating happened in her family and I understand, but why somebody doesn't reach out, let you know beyond me. And like, that's the human 3D thing, right? You, you at least let somebody know because you've known months in advance you're gonna be on someone's show. But in the, higher realm of all of this, you and I both know the universe yet again, pushing me, right? Pushing me. <laughs> and so here I am, I debated and debated. I'm about as vulnerable as you could be right now and comfortably so to be out here by myself. And I'm sure you're thinking, what? You're interviewed all the time and you're on stage and it doesn't matter. And so it just is what it is. And if you resonate, right on, let me know. Cause we end up doing things we're not comfortable doing. Then we end up going, that was not so bad. It was actually kind of fun. So I'm doing it. I'm, this is my year of saying yes, stepping in and saying yes. I got invited to speak December 1st through 3rd, the end of this year in Mexico city at the UFOlogy conference. And I was sort of blown away. I, first of all, I've not spoken on stage since like actually right when COVID was starting, I was on stage and just the week before everything shut down, but I've not spoken on stage since then. And when I was speaking on stage, it was about writing books because I'm a book writing coach. It was about being interviewed on podcasts and getting great results because that's what I do for people out in the world outside of this. And I was so interested in ufology. Y'all know that's my jam. So why are they inviting me? Because, so this has been my journey. I'm just gonna tell you this amazing journey and all of that, I'll, I'll do the journey, but I also wanna get to the punchline and say, I said, yes. How did you find me? We found you through the Conscious Life Expo. Oh, how beautiful. And so they want me to be one of their main speakers. I said, yes, this is something I've never spoken about, but I'm going to own where the universe is pointing me. And it was the same last year when I wanted, I've been wanting to follow shamanism for so long. In 2019, I did a week in Costa Rica at the amazing Rhythmia, uh, four back-to-back -back nights of ayahuasca and yahe, et cetera. And starting the first night, many, many, many things happened after I drank plant medicine, but the first night it was shocked when the divine came and she said to me, you're a healer, a priestess, a shaman. And I was like, mm. <laughs> it must be one of those other 80 people over there. But I was really surprised because I know myself to be many things and I own them and I claim them and I'm proud of them. But those were not words I would have used to describe moi. However, I would have used it to describe many of my friends, Fashoa. And I certainly would use it to describe the amazing people who come on my show. And I was really uncomfortable with it and I didn't understand it and I started negotiating. And then I said, well, just don't make me see dead people. 
And they agreed. And the next night they came back, the divine, when I drank again, and they said the same thing. And they were so beautiful and gentle with me, so clever. And nothing had to be shoved down my throat. I just love, you know, they, they know all our personalities and how to work with us. And so what they did for me is they showed me what it would look like to see dead people. And I was like shocked because it wasn't bad. In fact, it was rather fascinating. And I went, oh, okay, this isn't like some scary slasher movie. Got it. And so I was amenable. And the third night they came. And the fourth night on Yahe. I believe the fourth night was Yahe. Yeah, it was Yahe. Because you never forget Yahe. It's a purgative. <laughs> From every end, you don't forget Yahe. And so that night, they said, we want you to go up to the shaman and ask for a shaman's blessing. And for 20 minutes, I was very angry. And I said, no, you're nuts. These are people who've been drinking in jungles and been lineage passed down. And if it's not lineage passed down, boy, they have done the work. You know, that's very uncomfortable. But the divine wouldn't let up. And so I finally acquiesced and I went up to... I went up to a shaman and I said, um, this is what's going on. And this is what they've asked me to ask of you. Or they had magnificent shamans there. And he was so lovely. I was just so surprised how every, no, everybody else was nonplussed except for me. And so he said, yes. And I did get a special shaman's blessing. You would think it would have been over then. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. Because then the divine came back and one of the women, Sarah, um, a sham, just beautiful. They said, now you must ask Sarah for a blessing so that you understand your path. It's so amazing me sharing this right now. I feel really vulnerable and a little bit emotional remembering all this because now I'm seeing where I am right now. I know like in four years, I may share and see an arc of a different story because I'll be in a different place and get more of the picture. So they wanted me to say, not just ask Sarah uh, for the blessing in order so I could see my path of shamanism and get a blessing on that path, but they wanted me to call her sister. And I'm like, oh, wow, you're pushing me. You're pushing me, I don't like it. I don't know if anyone else out there is like me. You don't like to be told what to do. Totally. Um, I like to figure stuff out on my own. <laughs> like, just, oh, leave me be. So they would not leave me be. And so I went up to Sarah and I said, sister, the divine has asked me to ask you for a special blessing so that I will know my way and path on the shaman path. And she said, yes. Oh, so humbling, like so humbling. And she put her hand on my head and she spoke Spanish. She also spoke English, but she spoke Spanish over me. I do not speak fluent Spanish, but I understand enough Spanish to understand many of the beautiful words that were being spoken over me. So when I came back from to the States, I was like, WTF, what was that all about? And I have some very, very, very gifted friends. And they said, why don't we do some past life regressions for you? And so y'all know I'm a believer. I'm about as spiritual and woo is the woo as the new woo goes. But I've also been an eye roller about past life regressions. Like somebody tries to do a past life regression and then says, look down at your feet. What are you wearing? Eye roll. That's me, not you. That's me. Doesn't work for me. And then I get in my head and I'm, it's the worst. So I've never liked those. And I, but I was just so curious. I was like, all right, take me away, Calgon. And so I, I did several of them and I had incredible mind-blowing experiences. I will say the person who led me through it because I like to give credit, um, Dr. Michael Gross, if any of you know him, he's amazing. So he, uh, two of the ones he did with me, and he doesn't do the whole look at your feet thing. So it was really very positive. And, um, 
anyway, the way he held the space and the way he got me there. So that feels very private to me. So I'm going to keep that to myself, but I will tell you that I absolutely saw one of myself as a male so long ago, I wouldn't even know the timeline of when that was, but a beautiful life of myself as a shaman. And I saw another uh, lifetime in uh, Mayan Inca times where I was a priestess and that was really profound. Um, and the conversations I had with her and the things I learned from, she couldn't have been more different, looked more different, acted more different. And um, it was actually gonna be a clue on my, my path. So anyway, I guess I'll tell you, I won't keep my, I won't keep my cards so close to the vest, but I will tell you that when I asked this particular being, uh, who is me in a, another or concurrent lifetime about herself. I mean, I was just so amazed at her demeanor. I can't tell you how different we are because she was so uh, non-emotional, frankly, and very tall. She must've been seven, nine, 11 feet tall. I don't know. And a hundred percent manifester, manifest, manifest. And I was really amazed at her, how, how she was. And at one point in our dialoguing, am I asking her all sorts of questions? I made an assumption and I said to her, oh, well, you must be, you must be very closely connected to God or source or goddess because you are clearly a priestess uh, of these people, but there's something very creator about you. And I said, so like you and God, or, you know, you're, you as a human and as a God, maybe you figured that out. And she shook her head and she pointed up. Now, back then, I did not believe in extraterrestrials or UFOs. And I was also an eye roller. And that's a true story. I was a completely different person. I didn't get it. There were certain things I loved, like Whitley Strieber's books. There were certain things I loved but mostly it was about movies. I don't know. I didn't get it. I just wasn't in my wheelhouse at all. Everything else was channeling all sorts of metaphysics and, and uh, healing and so forth and energy. Yes, yes, yes. But no, not at all. UFOs, extraterrestrials, UAPs, etc. What a different human I am today. Back then she, she raised her finger and did this. And I looked at her and she said, I'm not from here but I live here. So that was so hugely surprising for me and shocking for me, but beautiful also because I just ingested that information. It was fact over this lovely, amazing me <laughs> being that I met. Okay. So that said, then COVID hit. I was actually going to go after shamanism and I found an amazing course and you had to leave and live in this place. It was a residency course for a month in another country and it was a huge deal. It was like a really big deal because you have to leave your work, your dog, your, your apartment, everything. And everybody knows you're not going to just go to another country for a month for residency. You're going to, you're going to, you got to travel in the country, right? At least three weeks. So I realized oh, I'm probably going to be gone two months. This is a lot, but you know, Providence took over. I didn't feel in my gut. It wasn't right for me. And thank God, thank God I didn't do it because as it turns out, COVID hit, I would have been stuck in another country, right? So the divine was at play here. Okay. That said, during COVID, I started doing music for ceremonies, very shamanistic music, very medicine, very uplifting. I revisited something I hadn't done for 15 years. I used to be a professional singer. I let it go to do radio and book coaching and all of that. And here I was performing again, parties, festivals, online things, um, ceremonies, plant ceremonies, all of it. And just going, oh, well, maybe this was my path as a shaman. And I was very happy and content there. And I still am, by the way. I still love, love, love doing that. And that was beautiful for a few years in the sense that it sustained me with the knowledge this may, no, well, maybe this is my path. This is maybe what I give back to the world. And then last year, I heard the same man that I heard in 2019 speak again 
Only this time he had an online course for six months. <laughs> and in my gut, I said, I, if not now, when I cannot anymore, I have to do this. So I've been in this program, the shaman program. I've stepped into it. I am learning all these amazing, very powerful, very, very powerful, very, very powerful shamanistic processes. And that's where I am today. And somehow I feel that UFOs and extraterrestrials and the shaman are weaving and are going to be woven. And as the Indigenous people call them the star nations. And so I feel very excited about this journey and that's where I am today. And so here I am with you, feeling a little less vulnerable, but definitely in that space. Yeah, I'm definitely in that space because I am saying out loud after 16 years, like, this is who I am, you know? And when they wanted me to speak at this, um, this ufology event, it's like, I realized, wow, I've only spoken about books. I've spoken about, I've done the things that I know and the ways that I know how to help spiritual messengers become more visible. And I love that work because we're all here to have a voice at a really important time. So I know y'all are meant to be writing your books and being interviewed on media. I know that. But I also know that right now, the universe, the divine, et cetera, they're calling me. Are they calling you too? Are they calling me and saying, yeah, well, we put y'all, we put your soul together to be so much more. And it is time for you to go and shine now that light and that information out into the world. And so that's why I'm here doing this show alone today. Um, I had a call. Somebody might have done a little liquid courage. I did not. But I did call someone and just say, oh, my God. Like, I can't find anyone to fill in the show. And <laughs> he just said, you know, you, it's time. It is time. So here I am. And if it is okay with you, this is my shaman rattle. This was passed down from my mother to me. Um, I'm going to open the four directions in some sacred space with you. And um, just let us begin. Let us begin. And I will share what, I, what I'm going to share. And um, I look forward to your comments. Um, and if... I don't know, your comments, your encouragement, your anything that you resonate with. And I also look forward to anything you like to hear more from me in the future, because maybe the universe will keep pulling guests out of my show and saying, yeah, you need to start owning this, my love. So I'll, I'll stop there and let's open the four directions. And the four directions, by the way, open the sacred space. The only thing I'm going to leave out, I do have sacred water. I have uh, Florida water, which is um, spirit water. And I'm just not going to do it because you have to spit it. And I'll be spitting it at my screen. And that would be a bummer. And my camera. So just ignore that one part. But typically that is what I do as part of opening a shamanic space but as you know it's not just shamanic space it is for all of us energies everywhere and it is now beautiful to the winds of the south great serpent wrap your coils of light around us teach us to shed the past the way you shed your skin to walk softly on the earth teach us the beauty way aho to the winds of the west, Mother Jaguar, protect our medicine space. Teach us the way of peace, to live impeccably. Show us the way beyond death. Aho. To the winds of the north, hummingbird, grandmothers and grandfathers, ancient ones, come and warm your hands by our fires. Whisper to us in the wind, we honor you who have come before us and you who will come after us, our children's children. 
Ah ho. To the winds of the east, great eagle, condor, come to us from the place of the rising sun. Keep us under your wing. Show us the mountains we only dare to dream of. Teach us to fly wing to wing with the great spirit. Ah ho. Mother Earth, Pachamama, we've gathered for the healing of all of your children, the stone people, the plant people, the four-legged, the two-legged, the creepy crawlers, the finned, the furs, and the winged ones, all our relations. Ah ho. Father Sun, Grandmother Moon to the Star Nations, Great Spirit, you who are known by a thousand names and you who are the unnameable one, thank you for bringing us together and allowing us to sing the song of life. Aho. The ceremony and the circle is now open. <sighs> and so, let me talk about what do I know outside of my story. What I know is there's life outside of this planet. There's always been life outside of this planet. and that we have a lot of history and a lot of concurrent multidimensional lives, planets, galaxies, and everything is intertwined. What I know is that the visitors are here. What I know is that there are hybrids. And I will tell you some of my experience. So I mentioned earlier, I was an eye roller. Um, yeah. I really was. It's really interesting. You know, I listened, um, I watched this really cool documentary just this week about Mary Rodwell. And she is really famous in Australia as somebody um, who's an experiencer and also somebody who helps people who have experienced uh, abductions and extraterrestrials, etc. Uh, and she's amazing. She's really amazing. But, you know, in being her and speaking out, she lost her marriage. Um, and so the documentary was pretty much about her relationship with her son and her f coming out, so to speak, and showing her son all of who she is. And so I bring this up because, I mean, it was really beautiful and I recommend watching it. And, it, and it's free, I think. I watched it on YouTube and it was free. I guess there's a part of me that it's a little bit of a... Um, you know, when she goes into a debate with somebody who's a physicist at one point, and it's filmed, and the physicist is actually really nasty. He's really nasty to her, making fun of her constantly and um, saying horrible things uh, to her, you know, when she's trying to talk about the people she works with and the abductees and what they've seen. And I mean, it could the guy blew like an amazing chance he could have been open and learned but he was so busy mocking and making fun he actually came off as a bully and and then there were certain people in the audience when he would say things who would laugh and he would say things such as well you know if ufos really exist how come every time we see pictures they're grainy but you know that's actually not the truth <laughs> is not the truth and uh, there's several times including in my life when i've seen things and i can tell you they were now that they're not grainy so it's a little bit of a because when i saw the people laughing i thought gosh once i would never have been mean to someone's face not like that not like that at all but the part of me inside that was like the non-believer would have been that that's what i mean by the eye roller so yeah it's a kind of like e but it's amazing you know like to be living in this space and this, what I feel is truth. I didn't want to say belief, but my truth right now. So that said, going from where I was to stepping into this, 
you know, the divine is very beautiful because they were assisting me as a non-believer in uh, changing how I felt. So it started out, the first experience I had, I was with um, somebody, at, I'm not going to name her, but she's very famous as an uh, extraterrestrial channel. Very, definitely very famous here in the United States, also in Japan, and many, many, many people in this metaphysical UFO world know about her. And so I was, I had a series of events that led me to be invited to her very intimate workshop. I wasn't supposed to be there. Um, the only people she invites are people she has known over the years. I think she only lets 25 people come, probably out of the hundreds who would like to come. And I wasn't supposed to go there, but there was a series of wild events that for her and me, uh, that was clearly, you know, somebody was colliding us to this in-person meet. And so I ended up going to this experience. And I think it's, it was a four-day experience. I'd never done anything like this before. And she channeled the whole time, the extraterrestrials that come through her. It was amazing, full of wisdom. And at night, we would go out and do contact work. And so we went out in the desert. And um, so you got to bear with me. Please be patient because it takes me a while to become who I'm going to become, right? And so, oh, lower hand. That's weird. I don't know how a hand got raised, but that's very cool. Maybe the divine is saying, I would like to intervene right now. Well, you did. Okay. So anyway, that was really weird. Um, but you got my attention if you need my attention. So I'm at this amazing event and we're out on sacred lands, sacred indigenous land. And so, you know, they're doing their stuff. Um, and when it came time for a break, I was kind of like, mm, this is very interesting. But um, I just thought, well, you know, we're out here, it's pitch black, you can't see ba barely your hand in front of you. I'm just gonna take pictures. And as you know, what's really cool with the iPhones now is that, you know, you can take a night picture and the lens will stay open so long in order to pull in a lot of light and create an actual picture in the pitch black. So I just started messing around because it was actually a very beautiful desert. Picture, 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 picture. And I'm just taking pictures. And then I got to this, I guess what I was trying to capture, there was this tree and it, and it was very beautiful because you could see the night sky and all the stars. And I was trying to capture that through the branches of the tree. But I'm like, oh no, I'm getting my finger in the lens. I'm ruining the picture. So I tried so hard to get my fingers out of it and you know take the picture with the cell phone, but it kept happening. And then I'm like, this is so strange. I wonder if there's something wrong with the cell phone. And now I'm taking pictures like this. And what I'm realizing is I am not, and now I wish I could show you. For those of you who are looking at this on Spotify or YouTube, the visual, the video, now I wish I could start posting pictures and showing you this is what I captured. I have captured orbs before in my life, nothing like this. This orb t took up the entire top 40% of the photo. It was beautiful. It was milky and it had other things inside of it. And then there were other orbs much smaller around it. And this thing was for real. And what happened was every time I was moving the phone, thinking there was, I was doing something wrong or getting my finger in it, I was capturing orb, orb, orb. Then I go out in the back and I'm taking pictures. There is sort of a, like a corral, wooden, like horses. Might, you might have visioned horses being behind this kind of corral fence, although there were not horses out in the desert. It was just pitch black. And I'm still taking pictures. And later... When I'm looking, just looking through my photos, thumbing through them, oh, do you know, I get anything cool about the desert? What I'm seeing is craft coming down. And I'm like, oh my God, seriously, of all the people here, I'm the one who's kind of the one who didn't drink the Kool-Aid, the skeptic, and I cannot believe this is happening. All right, that's that. Then 
the next night, I'm trying to do this in chronological order. Yeah, so the next night, now mind y'all, at this point, I had some very severe hip issues, like medically severe. I had severe osteoarthritis that's been resolved now, but at the point, like sitting was awful for me. So the next night we're sitting around this huge circle and um, everybody is in these really comfortable lawn chairs. And I have the shit chair. I am not kidding. It was this old metal lawn thing. It was the worst thing I could have been sitting in. And I just thought I was going to lose my mind because it was a very long time for me to sit while she was channeling. Now, if I was comfortable, it would have been no big whoop. But of course, okay, everybody knows you turn off your phone. My phone is turned off. Everybody's phone is turned off. And I'm sitting in this terrible chair and I'm thinking, I really, it got so bad, I started praying. And I'm thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, please, please, please send me help, send me help. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. This hurts so much to be in my body right now. And please, you know, maybe helps, somebody can exchange chairs with me or I, I can, or this will be over and I could take a break or, you know, just send me help. This hurts, this hurts. Okay. All of a sudden, an alarm goes off in the middle of this absolutely a pin could drop silent desert. What the heck? And so everybody's looking around because it totally disrupted the channeling. And ever, for some reason, everybody's looking at this amazing, wonderful, sweet guy, Al. I don't know why we looked at him, but it sounded like the noise was coming from there. He's scrambling in his bags. Even he thinks it's him trying to turn this off. And he goes, oh, my God, I don't even have a cell phone. So everybody's looking around and it's like, oh, my God, it's me. It's my cell phone. And I pull out my cell phone. I don't even understand. This makes no sense. But it says medical emergency. I've never even, I still don't know how to set that off. If I don't even know if you dial 911. But on my cell phone, that's what it says. The alarm is coming from my phone. I am mortified because I'm pretty new to this group. And I've just been invited. And I'm making an embarrassment. And all this attention is on me. And I'm so sorry that I just interrupted Anyway, all this channeling and the group, and I'm trying desperately, and I finally am able to shut it off and shut it down. Well, God bless this woman because she's so lovely. I mean, so lovely because what she said was there is a group of beings actually surrounding our group. And she said, and they came here and they're facing. And of course, they were facing in my direction. There were other people sitting next to me, but they were facing in my direction. And they came to provide medical help. And they're from the future. Can you believe it? We're sitting in sacred ground. I'm praying in my head, help me, help me, help me. And these beings come and she's channeling this. And I am like, and so my phone going off was probably my soul crying out for help and also them letting me know we're here. Medical help has come. Let me tell you, for a non-believer, I'm starting to go, oh my God, this stuff is getting so wild and real. And also so much gratitude that you all would take your time with me like this and slowly start to bring me in to this world. Okay. There was much more to that story, but because it was for the group and intimate, I will leave it at that. Then I start doing some Dr. Stephen Greer CE5 stuff with some friends. And the very first time we all go out to Joshua Tree, pitch black up against the mountains. We're doing CE5. We've also brought music and we're hoping so much to see some spacecraft and we do everything right. We have a beautiful evening, but nothing happens. And we get to about two o'clock in the morning and it's like, yeah, we're tired. And the trip back to LA is, it's probably four hours from where we are in Joshua Tree. So it's a long drive. It's two people in the back of the truck, they've fallen asleep. The person who's driving the truck, and I 
force myself to stay awake because I want to make sure he's not going to fall asleep with all of us in the car. And we're getting on the 10 freeway to head back to LA, close to the 60, but not quite there yet. And all of a sudden on the freeway at like 2.30 in the morning, this huge craft hovers, not in front of the truck like we're going to run it over, but up above in the sky. I'm going to make myself smaller as you can see, but you can absolutely see it's motionless. It's not moving. It's this shape. Let me do my fingers correctly. It's anyway. I'm freaking out. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Do you see it? And I'm, I'm screaming, yelling, pull over, pull over. And he couldn't pull over because there was actually a lot of tr cars on the road at 2.30 in the morning. And not one car saw it but us. What? And finally, we can safely pull over. We all four of us scramble out with our phones and we're, it was sucked because we were now too much of a distance, but we all took photos, videos of it. And it would stay still and then the craft would move and then hover to another distance and then move and then it was and then stay absolutely still there was no propulsion there was no sound we wrote to people we tried to find out and so many people who are very knowledgeable about this i would call, definitely call them experts said you know the fact that nobody else saw it this craft was meant for you so that was the next time that i saw something and again i'm like okay this shit's getting real <laughs> so then i started going to this woman's yearly this famous channeler et channelers yearly experiences and the next year we went uh by the time we arrived you know everybody wanted to a bunch of people wanted to stay up we i was tired so it's like, let's just get in bed because I wanted to make sure I was fresh for the next day when the whole workshop would start. And we woke up the next day and at breakfast, everybody was talking about the spacecraft they'd seen. And I was like, are you serious? I missed all of that. And I was pretty bummed. I was very bummed. And so, yeah, so I just kept thinking about sacred space there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> So I was pretty bummed and um, I will say, but God is good because the very next day we, were, we did our workshops all day and then we went out in the mountains. Now, Stephen Greer has talked about this particular place. I'm not going to mention it, but we were at a very particular place where he has said that in the, uh, there's a valley and then there's some mountains and in the caves that there's definitely uh, extraterrestri extraterrestrial craft in there and beings who live there and that's like a place for them, a port for them. And man, that was no joke. We started doing what we were doing. And what was so beautiful, by the way, at these workshops is I got to marry this, um, both of what I'm attending, but also I would sing uh, with my musical partner. And so it was beautiful. We got to do that out in the desert and then we got to experience the workshop. So we did the workshop, she's channeling, and then all of a sudden, everything they had described from the night before came. There were three orange orbs in the sky. There was also a flashing like, I don't even know. You know when you're seeing something like this, that it's not from this world. It was a, like a show in the sky. It was amazing. It was so beautiful and it's like, welcome to the world of UFOs and ETs. And I just felt so blessed. You know, that's what I felt like, super humbled, grateful. You know, thank you for showing yourself to me. Thank you for trusting me. I feel very moved by it. Thank you for bringing the people on my show that you do because, you know, they're just bringing me more information about all of this. And I have such a hungry, curious mind. And I know many in my audience really do. And many in my audience actually have incredible, way beyond what I'm saying, experiences. And by the way, I pray for that. I actually do a lot. I do, my morning ritual is very shamanic. And I, I do something called the Wiracocha, which is where you open sacred space. You use your eighth chakra. I can even open Wiracocha over you. 
and put some into Pachamama and to Mother Earth. And so I do that and I do something called the Bands of Power and I do um, a crown of gold and I also do my chakras, I clear my chakras. So I've got this whole amazing morning ritual that I do. And part of what I pray for is, you know, come to me, come to me, please come to me. Um, work with me, download to me. I'm ready for your wisdom. I'm ready for direct contact, for guidance, however that manifests. And of course, I'm always clear with benevolent beings. I'm not just an open portal by any means, but um, it is very important to me that, yeah, I'm ready for this. And I don't know if everything that's been happening has been helping me get ready for this But if that's the next step, I'm there. I'm really there. Years ago, when I was an eye roller, I also was really afraid of this stuff. So afraid. Like the books, the movies, you know, all the propaganda that does not make extraterrestrial life force seem like it's benevolent. And it doesn't mean it's sort of like they're good lawyers, bad lawyers, good doctors, bad doctors, good singers, bad singers, you know, whatever. In every line of work, in every kind of being, the good, the bad, the ugly. But predominantly who's looking after us and interacting with us are very benevolent and very advanced. And here's what's so funny is that mostly they're us anyway from the future or a concurrent dimension and galaxy. So we're kind of dealing with ourselves anyway, and just another aspect of us. So I'm ready for that. I'm even ready to meet the Mayan woman, the priestess. Oh, I would love to spend more time with her. That was pretty profound. She was definitely a mentor for me. So I think what I want to do at this point is take another huge leap. And one of the things I've been doing is light language. And for those of you who don't know what light language is, most people do because it's, oh, most people are doing it these days. It's incredible. Um, but it is, they say, the language of God, the language of creation. They, um, and, and by the way, it manifests in so many different ways. Uh, some people just speak it and don't know what they're saying. Some people, most people, almost everybody receives it and they receive it completely different and exactly perfectly how they're supposed to hear it and receive it. And some people understand and they can speak and translate what they're saying at the same time. Usually, almost always, there's a frequency of healing about it. You don't have to understand the words and you can just let it be. And so I feel this is like... Mm, for me to step out and do this. But, um, but I'm really loving this idea of what comes through. And here's the thing is, I have no idea what will come through. Um, I don't speak it. I have, but mostly they're tones. So I hope you will sit back and enjoy this as my gift to you. This is like mega uber, uber, uber. Uh, vulnerability right now. However, I am drawn to do this for you, my gift to you. So I want to just start by saying these cards that I'm holding up again, if you'd like to see and experience all of what I'm sharing right now, um, just go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger or Spotify dare to dream with Debbie Dashinger. Got to get the spelling of my name, right? It ain't it ain't the American way. There's no D-A-S-H. It is D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And the first name has no E. It's D-E-B-B-I. So I say, think of my first name like a ribeye steak. <laughs> it's Debbie. No, it's Debbie. And then uh, think of my last name like dashing through the snow. And one horse open sleigh. It's D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R, Austrian. Okay, perfect. So these beautiful cards I am holding up are from Jamie Price. What a beautiful creature she is. Jamie was recently on my show. So if you want to see her interview, highly recommended you check it out. And she does light language on my show. These are her light language oracle cards. I love her, these cards, by the way, because um, 
They're always right. So I like to pick a card from here and then we'll see uh, what the message is for everybody. So there will be a message for you guys in this. And then uh, I will allow whatever is meant to come through with light language to impart to you about the message of this card. So let's see, I'm gonna just feel everyone's energy and pick a card for the entire group live, recorded, replay. I know where I'm being drawn. All right, this one's screaming at me. <laughs> oh, I think it's so funny. All right, serious. It's a serious card, as in the planet and the people. Uh, Syrians, initiation, and it's communication. So we don't have to look it up, but it's kind of more fun to look it up. Um, and maybe the uh, extraterrestrial healers will work on my eyesight because I love to, once upon a time I had perfect eyesight and I miss that. So let's just see very quickly what it says. Aha! You'll love it. You'll love it. I communicate authentically with myself and others. Oh my God. That's like so exactly what I'm doing right now. So that means y'all attest to that as well. Notice your authentic intention behind your words. Observe the silent communication between others to hone your intuitive skills. Communicate in a compassionate and supportive manner. Do not avoid confrontation at the expense of your empowerment. This card is asking you to look at the intent of what you and others communicate and become authentic in your communication. You will know when it is the wisdom choice to speak or be silent. You have less need to be viewed as right by others. You'll find yourself forgiving more easily etc. Okay, that's so beautiful. The light language is opening you to a deeper communication with yourself and life, supporting your release of patterns of suppression. The Syrians are helping to open your power of deep communication to improve life. Hallelujah. All right. I wish I could put hold this up, but I'm going to just put this down here with the rest of the cards. All right, Syrians. Let's see what comes through. Ha ah, ha ah, ha ah. oh, ah.
That was communication. Mm. Thank you, angels, for listening and I hope receiving something that I hope is a value for you. And for those of you who, I'm going to just close We a Kocha right now because I, I don't want to shift into too much right now, but I just want to close sacred space with you. And, and I thank you all for joining me. I am Debbie Dashinger. This is the Dare to Dream show. And what I do out in the world is media visibility for spiritual entrepreneurs like you. I teach you how to write a book and finish the darn thing. I have a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. And I show you how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and how to do a freaking amazing job while you're being interviewed so that you get massive results. If I can help you, reach out. I've got ongoing classes. I work with people privately. It's debbie-inger.com, D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. It's really been an honor to be with you at this time. And where do you need to be authentic? I guess that's really the message of all of this from beginning to end. How are you shifting? Where do you need to step into your own voice and who you are? really are and came here to be and of course it's way more magnificent than you're actually operating at right now so just know the world is ready to receive you this is your time your soul chose to be here at this auspicious time because you are the peace of light the peace of heaven here on earth that is needed right now and you've got a point of view and a message that we all need to hear so I'm going to end the transmission now, and I can't wait to be with y'all again, and we'll see if the divine nixes out any other guests in the future to force me to be with you. But more than anything, especially because this is my, um, this is my first time doing this really without talking about all the stuff I do and letting you know about that, or doing a whole show about being interviewed or writing books, you know, the salesy stuff, like, no, just putting all that aside and going, here's who I am. And of course, there's so much more to that, right? So much more that we can dive into in the future. Much love, everybody. Much love. I'm going to end the live and stop it and then end the recording. DebbieDashinger.com. And next week, we might have a guest on the show. And if not, I will be here.